Hey everybody, I'm Jody Vance. And I'm George Affleck. And it's time for... Where the three is the magic number! Unspun! Love it! Unspun three, our third year started today. Three years we started this. I think we're officially family now, George. These are into our third year. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. This is uh, pretty, I don't know. Besides the week we took off last week, we haven't missed one week. Uh, The show has not missed one week in in two years. That's impressive. Not bad. We've done it when we traveled. Uh, Yeah. You know, uh, we've done it. Remember that? Before we get to travel, because that's a big conversation here, let's let's start with the elephant in the room that is on a global scale, what we witnessed in the United States, uh, 1-6. We'll remember 1-6, 2021. I mean, 2021 mm-hmm. was supposed to be a fresh start, all good, let's move forward. It's kind of like it turned to 2020 and said, hold my beer, you know? I know. We were so like, oh, get this year over with. And then week one, oh, what a nightmare. What Six a, what days. a sh- like, you okay, we're starting. <laughs> what I saw somebody tweeted down uh, and they're walking by like a zero days of craziness, you know, or six days. <laughs> they put it back to zero again. When are we going to have normality in our world? It, what, well, how did it feel for you watching it? I mean, I saw I saw on your social media that that I mean, you, having been an elected official, you've been in council chambers when there were protesters who, you know, didn't storm it in the way that uh those Trump supporters did in such a tense and violent, you know, no. way. Um, however, no matter how a group comes flooding into a government building, that has to be, I don't know, scary, triggering. What's the right word here? Yeah, it doesn't compare, obviously, at all. No. Uh, but this was in 2017 on City Council, um, that a group of people protesting the homelessness issue in Vancouver, uh, which was a plank issue for Vision Vancouver. And uh, obviously solving it by 2015 didn't happen because by 2017, they're going, what happened? Where's our solution? Uh, and so they came into City Hall. They're, you know, It's quite a re- regular kind of group that shows up. But they showed up in force and they showed up uh, re- with banners and they basically took over the chamber. Uh, they pushed us out. Uh, security came in and ushered us out of the chamber. Um, you know, I was willing to stay. I, I wasn't intimidated, but I know that there were fellow counselors and many staff who were very, very concerned and and, and worried uh, about how this could go. And if you don't know, if you've never been to City Hall, it's 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 not like what they had in Washington, where they had to escape places. You you're in the chamber. There's one exit uh, out to the hallway, yeah. uh, and then behind the chamber is all of our offices that we, we we are. And there's no other exit. So you you exit. There's only one way out uh, of where you are. So we're pushed back into our offices and then there was nowhere to go. Uh, so if they had pushed into our offices, uh, you know, and if it had gone violent, which it didn't, um, you know, it was, it was scary. I know that, uh, you know, my fellow counselor, Elizabeth Ball, uh, you know, was very, very upset about this and, and, you know, with good reason. Um, and it, it begs the question about democracy, which was a big, big conversation yesterday about, the role of democracy and the role of protest and what is the difference between a protester and a rioter and intimidation versus, you know, this was what we saw yesterday uh, at the, the highest level of, of disorder uh, and chaos uh, and, and antagonized and, and pushed by the president of the United States. I mean, this was, a, you know, the worst thing I've seen certainly in my life, uh, you know, in a democratic society. I think we all know that. We all feel that way. It was shocking. And, uh, you know, so I certainly cannot uh, empathize to the level that I'm sure they felt in, in Washington. But I certainly, knowing what it means to when people come in and push you out because they're so frustrated. In the case of Vancouver, um, interestingly, you know, uh, one of those people was Jean Swanson, and she actually there's pictures of her sitting at the mayor's uh, desk in the chamber when they took it over. Um, and she uh, ended up, of course, running in 20 that year uh, and won uh, to become a city councillor. And while some people might say, oh, that's how dare she, you know, she's gone from protester to elected councillor. I say that's exactly where she should be. That's yeah. exactly how her voice can be heard. She can now represent the people 
on the issues that she cares and that they care so much about in the chamber through a democratic process. Bring, bring motions, for, motions forward. Fight for those issues in council in a democratic process. That is the way it's supposed to work. If you want to be engaged, you want to make change, you got to do it in the House. You got to get involved politically. Run for office if you want to make change. Don't just sit in your chair protesting. Get involved. Be involved. Get, there's committees. There's all sorts of ways you can get involved politically. And I encourage anybody in any city, uh, anywhere, uh, you know, to get involved and not just be a protester, not be a rioter. Run for office. It's not impossible. It's a good place to put your energy and show what you can do and make a difference to society. You can make a difference. You can have impact. I like that as your message. We'll circle back to uh, the happenings in the United States if we have an opportunity here, but there's a lot we got to get to uh, that is very hyper local. Uh, we're recording the podcast a little late uh, today on the 7th of January, 2021, because we wanted to wait for Dr. Henry's uh, briefing, the update from uh, the provincial health office and uh you got a friend in the room. The, the dog, it's the dog's mine. barking. I think my son's my trying to walk in the middle. No, that's Calvin over there. You want to see Calvin? There he is. Oh no, he's, there's he's Calvin. Yeah. Anyway, um, Doctor Henry, so you got your fake fireplace on behind you too. Hey, we 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 keep the sound on that. It's quite soothing. It's not just for show. This is not just for Room Raider. I've already got my 10 out of 10. We're good. We're good. Um, let's go back to Dr. Henry because it's a very important update today, enough so that we delayed the, the recording of our of our Unspun podcast because today um, the numbers, they're significant. Uh, 731, 761 new cases, in fact, 761 new cases of COVID-19 in British Columbia. And the way it sort of is around the province where we're used to it being like, Fraser Health is the, you know, it's not all in Fraser Health. In fact, interior health is rising. And a lot of people talking about in the interior and, and Kelowna in particular, a lot of anti-mask, a lot of right wing, a late country. There's there's sort of this feeling up there of like, you know what? No, they're graffitiing public buildings. And it. everybody just needs to take a pause here. We have, you know, opportunity. It's real. It's it, it, real, everybody. I have my own personal experience now. Literally, my next door neighbor, uh, living the same kind of life I live, fairly careful, wear your masks, you know, kids, uh, all those things that we all, you know, you're you're living a much more careful life because of your dad, uh, who's in you know long term care. Um, my life is probably like most people's. You know, we have our in our family unit, which is the three of us right now, and and that's it. Um, and then the neighbors we see on occasion outside because we share a, a walkway. But my my ne next door neighbor, um, who I hadn't seen really, I'd seen him around. We you know they're obviously on New Year's. We're all standing on our porches, waving at each other and cheers. And um, but he had seen another neighbor, and I saw him the day before. And then he said, "Oh, he's got a sore throat." And my, and and this other neighbor was saying. But it's probably just a cold. I'm like, cold? That, that, who gets a cold? You get COVID. That's what you get now. That's what you get. That's all you get. I haven't heard about anybody getting a cold at all. No. If you're going to get something, the most contagious thing you could possibly catch, it's COVID. And so he followed all the rules. He was following the guidelines by the, whatever he did, wherever he went, some grocery store. Who knows? Because he can't really figure it out where he caught it. Um, it can be it. as simple as not washing your hands and touching your face once before you do the hand sanitizer. Like that one slit is the difference here, which is why absolutely Dr. Henry is pleading with us the vaccination rollout. There were 41,064 vaccinations so far in British Columbia. So the, we're on track to, to hit some good numbers. It's all about supply right now in getting the prioritization of the most vulnerable in our community. Can you imagine, George, when this is all in the rearview mirror? I can't wait. We're all, we're, we're going to get Planning there. my trips now in my head. Exactly. Exactly. Before you do, you should be aware, however, that the public health orders that have been in place, the ones that are keeping us in our house, household bu bubble, that are making sure we don't gather in yes. our homes or anywhere, have been extended for oh, another right. month. Till February 5th, they have been extended for another month. And, and that is a big piece of the puzzle here that people need to hear. The, 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 there is no spin on, I don't care what you're looking I mean, we're two weeks out of uh, two weeks out of our. Your, your time. I'm super. No, weeks, I'm mad at my kid who's sneaking in, even though I told him I'm oh, in the middle right? of the podcast. That's okay. Seriously, it's okay. Get yeah, out. Uh, no, get in, get in. I'm kidding. <laughs> you should see his. Face. He's like the dog or the kid. The kid. Uh, <laughs> he's like, oh, you told me not to. 
No, it's fine. You know, the, the thing is that what's it's about two weeks now since Christmas, isn't it? So we're we haven't seen a massive spike, which is good, but we are seeing that gradual growth, which is not That's where we want to go. We're going. This up is all again. very we're humbling, trending. too. You know, we're this trending all, up again. Yeah, and, and I think the two weeks or whatever, another month, which is sucks. It, it kind of begs the question, like. Maybe we should just go full lockdown, like a real lockdown, which we never had, or at least what we had in the beginning uh, for two weeks. And just instead of four weeks, can't we just get this done in two weeks? You know, it's like, I don't know the science, but like, well, can we just get this done? I mean, I, this whole thing is humbling in my point of view. I guess it's like that thing that happened next door for those people who are not following the rules. You know, luckily this neighbor, he's okay. It's, you know, he's not having an extreme version of it, but you know, he's got kids that, you know, who knows, right? I mean, who, who he might have passed it on to. He, well, that's he's just done it. The work he, and... he might have handed it off to someone he doesn't know, and they might get an extreme version of it and land in hospital or worse. And that's what Dr. Henry, in watching the briefing today, a couple things that I took away is that she got quite emotional in, in speaking to British Columbians who, as you say, most of us are doing what everything we possibly can and still we're at risk. I mean, it is a, a global pandemic for a reason. 100%. She called that individual heroism. And then she referenced people because the the numbers show at 761 new cases, uh, it does show that that some people chose to make themselves the exception to the rules over Christmas. They thought that maybe bending them a little bit. Yes. Um, You're what would you what did you call them? You have a name term for it. She the, she said that people no, oh, loop you, holers. You, oh, loop loop holers. holers. Yeah. yeah. Loop holers thinking that they're doing everything. I my my bubble is so tight. And I'm just going to go and hang out no with Whistler with my friends. Uh, that's not a bubble. What? That's not the no. bubble. That's not the rule. The rule is who's in your house. That's it. And even that's risky if your kids or whatever are at school. You have that. There is some risk there. But the bubble would be three. I have two other kids and I, can have, I can't see them. I, yeah. We had Christmas on Zoom and they live literally blocks away from me. You know, it's it's this is the decisions we have to make. No travel. No, no travel, travel, anybody. And the people that are saying, what, I pay property tax at my place and blah, blah, blah. It's not about your elite property somewhere, guys. It's about your primary residence. Stay in it. Stay in your community. There is no reason for you to go to your fancy rental. I, I saw Keith Baldry. Uh, bless that Keith Baldry, man. He is on Twitter talking to people so calmly. Every now and then he's like, buddy. There's a guy that's like, I live in Victoria and I want to go skiing at Mount Washington. And he's like, no, no, well, you can't. Sorry. Well, you this can, year you can't do your ski vacation. Well, you can. This vacation. Yeah, yeah. You but can you do that as long as, but it's, it's definitely pushing the, when you look at those lineups, the, the ski hills, you're like, Ugh. but you know, I think, what? yeah, it's, it's, and, yeah. and you know, the politicians. Oh my, can we get, gift. okay, let's go there. Let's go there. Cause what? talk about spin. I mean, holy, what part of this did you not understand? And you're a politician. You have to put yourself at another level uh, beyond what the public are to be an uh, example. <laughs> That's your job. What are they doing? So many of them are, you know, West Van, Victoria, all those people from Alberta traveling to, I mean, who doesn't want to go to somewhere sunny right now? For God's sakes, we all do. All of us. No, we don't. We're not. You don't. And of course, yes, well, you know, you're allowed to travel. You know, you, the planes are flying in and out. So therefore, why, you know, the, the airlines are allow it. So they're, no, but you don't understand. First of all, you're going to a place that's highly contagious. You know, if you're going to California, geez. Oh my God. Like it's not much worse than that. And and so you're, and then, you know, maybe you're not bringing it back, but you're just, first of all, you're risking your life. You're for, asking what, people to follow sun, rules and then you're breaking the rules. That is bullshit that is complete and utter bullshit when you're a politician okay and when you're a, a scientist who's also like assisting <laughs> you know this is why we do our podcast earlier this is why we do the podcast early let's let that dog bark it out okay whoa okay a little dog action there we just had to do a little cut there a little edit for us all there Thank you. I'm to, sorry so that you I had to put your... Okay, so the travel. Here's the thing that, that really gets me. That dog barking, by the way, makes me want to go on a vacation. That's, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a, that's that's a, a lot. That's a lot of bark. That's I a know. lot. They're, they're Anyways, politicians. Example. But politicians... So here's a, here's a debate that's sort of happening um, with regard to, is it about the travel or is it about the need to travel? Like... If somebody says, I had to travel to go care for my elderly parent who lives in another province or lives in, a, in, in south of the border, somewhere else, um, 
I, I would deem that essential, right? And as opposed to St. Bart's. Hmm? Sounds risky to the parent. Even in that scenario, even For that sure. sounds risky. You're taking your thing, your neighborhood, I agree. moving it to another neighborhood. When you are, as you live your life right now, yeah. very, very tight bubble or very tight community oh, yeah, that no, you I'm are in because you want to see your dad and you are the designated person who's allowed to see him at this long-term care facility. Essential care, yeah. And if anybody's over the age of 70, even people my age in my mid-50s, this is risky time. And this, we, yeah. the, the older you are, the riskier it is. And so, you know, I, Amanda's parents are in their 70s, her mom's in her 70s. This is all very, I don't want them to die. You bring up a very good point. When it comes to, it's just like no travel, zero travel, none. Because I was trying to find, is there middle ground on it? But like essential versus non-essential because people are traveling for work yeah. because that's essential. And this virus doesn't know that you're working or not working. You're going to carry it what, one way or the other. If you're moving around, it's a risk. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the piece of it. Another thing that Dr. Henry said today in the briefing, which I think is really important and a uh, health minister, Adrian Dix was referencing, they're adding more information. A lot of people in British Columbia who have been following along and sort of trying to figure out the numbers and specific information um, over the last number of weeks in particular. As you mentioned, my dad in, in long-term care, I'm so lucky that our care home uh, communicates so clearly with us, shares information so regularly. It's almost almost a daily occurrence. It's quite, quite something. Not always the case. Every uh, health authority is different, Every depending on whether you're in a private or what have you in terms of which care home you're in because um, there's one little mountain place we haven't had a chance to talk about this i was speaking with ian young who uh, of the south china morning post he really focused the light on little mountain place like 85 percent of the residents and staff were covid positive and the numbers when i interviewed him were at 38 deaths in this one care home it has now gone to 41 at at the time of this recording and those statistics were not available and when asked about it uh, earlier on in the week, Dr. Henry said, we just don't have the human resources to tabulate what's going on. I mean, there are 51 long-term care uh, and or acute care outbreaks in British Columbia. That's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts on top of, you know, the whatever, almost uh, 7,000 people that are being monitored right now. Like this, this is, this is a lot. So anyways, the dashboard is going to be updated at the BC CDC. If you want to take the spin out of this and see what the statistics are, the dashboard yeah. at the bccdc.ca website is unbelievable and will be updating like this now. You'll be able to see when, when there's a lab reported confirmed case, the number will ding up one. And Will you know what neighborhood it's in? They're, they are going to start speaking uh, specific to health authorities. Yes, there was a bunch of stuff. Hold on, I got to look at my notes. Because to here. me, there's been there's been in my building now. I think about you now I live in a build a tower in downtown in Yaletown. I think there's been about ten cases in my building alone. Three really? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, they said on Wednesdays. Other. Wednesdays, there's going to be a, a weekly report uh, that is about surveillance that includes ages and health regions. Uh, the vaccine update is going to be added. There's going to be a long-term care home outbreak summary that is weekly tabulated. So um, they're, they're adding a couple of case counts. I mean, you look at watching uh, CBC News Network, you see Ontario and Quebec numbers on Saturdays and Sundays, and sometimes here we'll go four or five days without getting an update. It's like yeah. people want to know, and it doesn't change what the numbers are, but people are watching what our pandemic looks like. And it matters. People ask me well, all the time, I, what are the numbers I, today? What are the numbers? <laughs> There's a competitive nature to me that I think it's the case. And that's kind of what this, I, our approach to doing the daily numbers, uh, I see that as a competition. <laughs> like, like, yeah, me too. I, I, I'm I with like, you. How do we, how do we get yeah. that number down? Like when we were down to 100 and then we we're down to 15 or whatever it was when we finally got down to like almost zero. Almost zero. Uh, we're back like in eight. August. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, come on, we could get to zero. Um, totally. It was, uh, to me, I, I think that's it's a, that's what the value of it is. It's almost like, let's make this a competition, everybody. Let's do this together and get to zero. I did that with the my, only time my you column. Want Remember I said that. All we other should, sports is up. We should make it a game show. We should make it a competition. like it, And make it a distraction. Like, who wants to be it's a millionaire? A Except for the other way. Yeah. I'll get my no. son to do the theme for the game show. 
Well, he did the Unspun podcast theme, and it's awesome. He also he's, got his driver's license finally in a pandemic. Yeah, huh? his full driver's license. He's one of us now. And his album comes out February 6th, his full album. So oh. I'll be uh, talking about that. I'll be ready for that. I will share that because when you cool. have shared his tunes in the past, I've been like, I need that. It's a very good album. Yes, it's I like very it. good. It's, my, it's okay. our kind of music, which is not I mean, old folks. It means like no. poppy fun. It's good music. Yeah, yes. he had the song of the summer, didn't he? That's right. Sounds yes. like yep. Uh, speaking of summer, we've been talking about Strathcona Park since the summer. <laughs> I, I, the- I'm seeing all these things about tents and construction of facilities in other parts of the province that are building these tent heated wood structures. For and I saw Sarah Kirby Young saying we need this in Vancouver, and I'm like, permanent tent city, and I'm like, okay, this is. I mean, we're we're this is a major problem. And again, we've talked about this. The, the galvanize nature of what we've done with COVID. I don't understand why we can't galvanize the country uh, and the world to an international problem, which is homelessness, uh, along with uh, opioid, uh, uh, the opioid crisis. These are two issues that are probably killing as many people as COVID. Uh, there's just, you don't hear about it, you know, I mean, around the world, every country is having this problem with, with uh, opioids and, um, and homelessness. And, and it doesn't seem to have the same gravitas the same energy to get it fixed and and um you know people would argue the environment also is up there um, but literally when we have people dying every day because of homelessness and because of drug addiction and we were um, told and, just a couple of weeks ago with a flashy hey this is what we're doing we're gonna put people there and there and we had the people in the strathcona neighborhood uh group that were like finally it's taken this long and it's now we're gonna see action and then nothing nothing the, the announcement about nothing, which is what it was. And it was a Seinfeld the episode of press where, conferences. The mayor wasn't there. And where is the mayor today? Where, where is, uh, there's a few councillors I haven't heard from in Vancouver. And it seems like the only people we're hearing from is somehow related to not traveling or traveling. <laughs> during. Right. And I haven't heard from, I mean, I haven't checked today, but, you know, did the mayor go on a trip? You know, did the, there are certain politicians that's a good that question. Are, be very, check, very silent. Check the Twitter. Tr- check check the Twitter feed. Has he tweeted anything? Because I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have my phone with me. So oh. I have to hold on. Stand by. Okay. I don't follow him. There's only so much I can do. Jared. True. Okay. There's only I so will much look you can while do. I'm, you're asking the slowest person uh, with this phone ever to do this. Okay. What's the next subject? Well, I want to talk a little bit, but it ties in what we saw in the United States with the conversation that we've been having about policing. Um, you know, one end of the spectrum, defund the police. And the other end of the spectrum is when we're looking at our Twitter feed, I um, follow Howard Chow, uh, Deputy uh, Commissioner Chow, and six, six days, sorry, six days ago, last time you tweeted. Six days ago. Not so even a happy new year? Not even a... Yeah, no, well, that was New Year's. Hmm. So, hmm. I wonder where Probably, he is. You know, sometimes as a, as a politician, it's like, what's the point of social media? It's just it's a place to get but, tortured. Anyway, okay, sorry. Let's talk Go. a little bit about the, about the policing that we saw or didn't see uh, with the, the the Trump mob uh, at the U.S. Capitol, right? Um, mm-hmm. Can you imagine if you'd replace that Trump mob with the Black Lives Matter group that we saw in, in the summertime? And, uh, hey, we're two white people that are going to have this conversation, but, yeah, you know. Privileged. The, you know there would have been a very that- different tone to yesterday to, to what mm-hmm. happened at the Capitol uh, if that was just a, a different demographic is what I'm trying to say. And the police showed such restraint. There was no overt police brutality right. there. Um, I think that needs to be a conversation to take, you know, as, well, as I think there's got to be an investigation and in planning. I mean, what, you know, you're looking at the Stanley Cup riots in Vancouver, like what happened? How would we not be pre- prepared for that? I would say that uh, given uh, the rhetoric coming from the president of the United States over the last while, this would have been assumed that something like this, in fact, you know, the day of and day before, he's saying, I will be there yeah. in, with you as we walk the streets. It's like he wasn't, but uh, he instigated this uh, energy and this riotous behavior. Um, and uh, it didn't, didn't seem like they had policed it the way they policed the Black Lives Matter stuff, which was a you know, intended to it was like peaceful. a military movement on peaceful protesters for him to walk across yeah. the street and hold up a Bible in front of yeah. a church. And they actually, uh, yeah, shocking. They, they, yeah, it, Lafayette so Square. I, I, That's just be, down like, the road. What? Just down the road. 
That's right. So you ask yourself, who made that decision not to put the proper policing in at, uh, at the Senate? Majority controlled by the Republicans till yesterday, till the 21st. But Rules of engagement. Very important. But It's going to be interesting. Then, a lot of stuff. You know, I keep thinking about this moment in time and I'm thinking, you know, when it's, when, I feel hopeful. I don't know about you. I'm feeling hopeful. I feel like, okay, we're, okay, that was a shit show yesterday. And, but I think it's like, I'm hoping it's like, okay, now we're, are we done? Are we done now? He's, his Did Twitter's been shut down. Shut out? Oh God, George, I hope you didn't just call the shutout. Cause we still got 13 days, right? And he's no, still, he may not have a tri- Twitter account, but he still has the nuclear codes, no, right? Like this well, guy is, yeah, I know. There's a whole, is there? Yeah. Good. Yeah. If, if the, the, the vice president, uh, if he can get the support of the chief, the, the majority of the chiefs of staff to say, you don't get to do this, buddy. And they take away his ability to do that. But the vice president has to ask for it. Now for this week, this loyal servant to the president, you know, Pence, yeah. who got basically screwed by Trump yesterday. Like, I don't understand the logic of, because the only other strategy that Trump had that potentially, you know, he's going to end up in jail now. The only way he would go to avoid that potentially is to pardon himself, kind of. But he, what he'd have to do, would he'd have to resign Pence becomes president, and then Pence does the, and so it's, but now you think Pence is going to do that? I hope I he says what? he does. I hope yes. he makes a deal with Trump and says, you know what, buddy? I got you. You resign, and I will pardon you. And then Trump resigns, and Pence goes, sorry, Psych. I changed my mind. Psych. I would love that that's the last chapter in this. <laughs> oh, wow. Because it's just the pardoning of, and, and the Medal of Honor being handed out to uh, like it's just and there's every day there seems to be a new low and and the capital and watching the uh, you were referencing the um the rally that he had with Donald Jr and and Rudy Giuliani and and they were literally inciting a riot they're like march down Pennsylvania Avenue and and have a trial by combat that's what Rudy Giuliani said mm-hmm. to a mob of people like that, if that's not inciting violence i don't know what it's like what how- I, I can't and i i just think that trump's probably going to pardon giuliani before no what, question next week it's just like oh my god it's like insane and and yet he continues to have uh, this trump this uh, massive support so i still though i'm hopeful for the future and i think that if we can uh that you look at uh mitt romney's speech yesterday a yeah. republican there are people then on both sides that you know that are good people trying to do good work and politicians. Did you say they're good people on both sides, George Affleck? Of course there are. Paul, I know, as a former politician, I'm just messing with you, do, you. I know you don't. You, but this is a big thing with politics. You know, I, you don't always get along on the floor. And then you know, even Lindsey Graham was talking about this yesterday. And, and even though he's a, like whatever, but there's you have these battles, but then you you turn it off and you are friends or sometimes with these, your opposition because you all have what you should, if you go into politics, only have one goal and that's to do good work and try to make the place a better either a country or a city or a province, whatever it might be. Then when you started there, you may not agree on how you get there, but the old, the overall agreement by most people who get into politics that I know is they want to do good work. They do. And so there are people that are don't and they are doing it for their ego or whatever, but most politicians I have ever met, are really doing it for the for, for good reasons, not bad reasons, and I think that re- makes me more hopeful because I know that people probably hate me for my choices and my behavior as a politician and my decisions and voting for this or voting for that. And but I I'm really honestly with doing it because I care about Vancouver. That's why I got into politics. I love this city. I, it's as simple as that. And you may not agree with my approach. But I sometimes don't I don't. So like, sometimes yeah. I don't. But I love talking it through with you when you're like taller building and i'm like gentle (laughs) density and we can have that conversation because it's like that old cartoon Uh, i love to come back to to this and my dad actually had two dogs one was a massive black newfoundlander uh, a newfie and the other was a, a german shepherd and they were named ralph and sam remember morning ralph morning sam and it was the sheep dog and the coyote and they would plug their time cards and then one would sit on the hill and the other one would go and try and get the sheep and they were adversaries until it was time to clock out. And th- the whole point is that we're all part of one 
side, which is the human race. At some point, one we have to look civil at civil society, right? one civil society, yeah, and a democratic, by a democratic process. Yes, yes. Let's focus on that. It's a good. We live in a, a really amazing place in this world that has so much. Whether you're American or Canadian, in and and any Western country right now is, you know, it, we. Let's keep it together, everybody. That's all yeah, I can we just say. need to be fortunate, and and really getting people on the on the same page, is is part of this. And when you're watching, like the, as I was mentioning off the top, the the briefing today with Dr. Henry, uh, our provincial health officer, and and Adrian Dix, and the comments that are flying by on the even the government. Um, as feed is where I was watching it. I often watch it on the global Facebook. Uh, the comments, you just, it's shocking the vitriol that is seeping in. We are not immune here. We need to check ourselves for the, the level of angst that has bubbled up so huge and hot in the United States. Like we just need to, you know, those who would want to tap into that anger here in Canada should really, Think, think twice, or think, please think don't. ten times. Please don't, please don't. Just, just don't. There, the right, the right wing is, needs to calm down. It doesn't work. Definitely try to. When you're in politics, there are many, many people who try to get you to become, uh, you know, that kind of take that approach to politics. It's it's enticing to many to become uh, this sort of politician that just says crazy things outlandish things because it works sometimes you know you can see it's worked with trump and it's what's painful to see that that kind of stuff still works and uh i hope we need to find the middle see where i'm going oh i find the middle i don't know i even know if you saw my middle this week i did i did were you surprised that i i pushed back on something that dr henry is (laughs) yeah i was thinking that were you i was thinking that i mean you know i think uh yeah it's good i guess well i mean you know i finally convinced you to it was you all along, George. It was you all along. I'll just leave it at that. Now you have to go to the orca.ca and read my column. It is, uh, yeah. Teaser. I also, teaser. It, it's a teaser. And 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 George, you are Underscore. a must. Yeah, you're a must. Don't forget follow. our handles. <laughs> at George. Underscore. Affleck on Twitter. I'm at Jody with a Y Vance. Jody Vance on Twitter as well as at Unspun Podcast, which we need to fire back up again. Unspun's been uh, slacking off. Give her a what nudge. The Unspun Podcast uh, oh, yeah. Twitter handle. Oh. Get on. Amanda. Okay, the oh, dogs say it's on time that to note, go. On that note, arr, happy new year. Oh, and we got to do this in the morning. Okay, Calvin, happy new year. Bye. Bye. Jesus. Oh, my God.